Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's my great pleasure to be here with you today in this splendid venue. And I would like to thank the organizers, uh, especially President Grimson, uh, for inviting me, uh, Paul Wheelhouse, uh, I should say my, my name, uh, to address this plenary and give me the opportunity to set out Scotland's ambitious plans for Arctic cooperation. Such is the Scottish Government's commitment to the Arctic Dialogue that Scottish Ministers have participated in this conference every year since 2016. And as you saw in the video there, uh, my colleague, the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, has addressed the conference in both 2016 and 2017. But this year and this Assembly are especially significant for us as we have just launched our first Arctic policy framework titled Arctic Connections. Indeed, as many of you will be aware, the links and connections between Scotland and the Arctic are deep and diverse. Scotland is the world's closest non-Arctic nation uh, to the Arctic region, our Shetland archipelago being as far north as Cape Farewell in Greenland. Together with the Orkney Islands, Shetland was for a long time, until the 15th century in fact, part of the Danish-Norwegian Kingdom, and these bonds continue to run deep in many aspects of Islanders' life and are reflected in the local culture, town names, dialects and traditions. And over centuries, many Scots have crossed the waters that separate us from the Arctic countries. In the 2016 Census of Canada, for instance, 14% of the population listed themselves as being of Scottish heritage. And we are very pleased that thousands of people from Arctic countries have made the opposite journey and have chosen Scotland as a place to work, to visit and to do business with. Scotland has strong economic links with Arctic nations, and in 2017, they provided five of Scotland's 20 largest export markets, a combined total of 27% of total Scottish exports annually. Arctic countries are also the origin of about half of all foreign direct investment in Scotland, contributing to our status as the leading UK location for global investment outside of London. And these economic links are numerous and varied, from Norwegian companies investing in our aquaculture sector to Scottish Faroese partnerships in our growing aerospace industry. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks to the geographic proximity and shared ambition, Scotland and its Arctic partners have long looked at each other for inspiration, opportunities and ideas. Our determination to work even more closely with our Nordic neighbours stems from a deep awareness that we face similar challenges in an ever more interconnected world. Identifying solutions to shared challenges must be the default position. For example, with only nine people per square kilometre and even as low as two uh, people per square kilometre in parts of our Highlands and Islands, the Highlands and Islands region is one of the most sparsely populated areas of Europe. 98% of Scotland's land mass is classified as rural and we have 96 inhabited islands, many of which have populations of fewer than 10 people. When I look at these demographic issues, it becomes clear that Scotland and our Arctic neighbours have many challenges in common, but these challenges can become opportunities from empowering rural communities and improving connectivity to promoting sustainable tourism and providing higher education in remote areas, there is a lot Scotland and Arctic countries can learn from each other and even more that we can achieve together. The importance of international cooperation and multilateralism has never been greater as the challenges we are collectively facing have never been more severe. The Arctic region and its melting glaciers are illustrative of the de devastating impact of global warming on our planet. Earlier this year, our First Minister declared a global climate emergency and reaffirmed our commitment to ending Scotland's contribution to climate change within a generation. Arctic Connections reflects our determination to present Scotland as a responsible global citizen with a moral obligation to continue to the challenge of, uh, contribute to the challenge of climate change and to influence others to do the same. To date, since our uh, baseline of 1990, Scotland's greenhouse gas emissions have almost halved. And by 2017, and in line, that was in line with our commitments under the 2009 Climate Change Act. Just two weeks ago, to, uh, our Parliament approved a new climate change bill through which we have committed to achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2045 at the latest, with uh, an interim target of achieving a 75 per cent reduction in emissions by 2030, which will be very challenging, but we believe it is achievable. And in 2018, 76 per cent of Scotland's electricity demand came from uh, renewable sources or was met by renewable resources, and we have committed to achieving 100 per cent by the end of next year. That, of course, is a challenging target, but we increased our uh, capacity by 11 per cent in last year alone. And Scotland is home to world's, the world's largest tidal stream project and world's largest floating offshore wind array, itself a collaboration between Norway and Scotland. And we are also leaders in exploring new hydrogen solutions, our home to Europe's largest research body 
on carbon capture and storage, with one of the UK's two carbon capture utilisation and storage clusters being located at St Fergus in Aberdeenshire. We are delighted that Scottish expertise in relation to renewable energy and uh, climate action has helped Glasgow be chosen as the host city for COP26, the United Nations Climate Summit in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, our ambition is bold. We want to promote Scotland as not only a European gateway to the Arctic, but also as a responsible global citizen and a shareholder in the Arctic's future. But the paths we intend to pursue are as important as our journey's destination. Arctic Connections is not a geopolitical statement, rather it is a blueprint for greater Scottish Arctic cooperation. We intend to establish Scotland as a key partner in the new north through knowledge exchange and mutual learning. At a time when the Arctic is the focus of much geopolitical attention, our policy frameworks uh, put people and communities back at the heart of the Scottish Arctic dialogue. And our approach is about giving and sharing, about ensuring our collective efforts improve the well-being and resilience of our communities and that is why the final section of the document, where we set out our key actions and commitments, is called Scotland's Offer to the Arctic. Let me then set out some of those, these actions and commitments. Starting from next year, we will establish a fund to support community-based organisations to encourage new opportunities for international collaboration uh, with the Arctic. In particular, we will promote exchanges between young Scots and youth in the Arctic region. We will strengthen trade and investment links by increasing the number of our trade envoys operating in Arctic countries. We will work with Arctic communities to share knowledge on the protection of indigenous languages, drawing from the expertise we have developed by promoting the use of Gaelic and Scots. We will work with our Arctic partners on decarbonisation of transport, including shipping and aviation, and look at new advanced solutions to delivering health services in rural areas, including mental health services. We will promote Scotland's credentials as a key marine transport and logistics hub, supporting efforts ensuring shipping traffic grows in a safe and sustainable way. We will increase Scotland's participation in North to North, the University of the Arctic's mobility programme, to build on Scotland's outstanding credentials in Arctic research. We will continue to share scientific knowledge in relation to marine pollution, climate change, biodiversity and decommissioning. These are just some of the many actions listed in the framework. And it's an ambitious and stretching agenda that has sustainability, equality and mutuality at its heart. By working together and pooling our expertise, Scotland and the Arctic nations can become a learning hub and develop solutions that can then be shared with other parts of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Scotland has a strong appetite for closer cooperation with our northern friends and neighbours. Collectively, Scotland is looking north. We believe Scotland has vision, capability and strategic position to become a key partner in the Arctic neighbourhood and the New North. There is a lot we can offer, but also we know there is a lot that remains uh, that we can learn from you. At a time when Brexit, which Scotland never voted for and is consistently rejected, is leading to new fences and new borders, Scotland wants to build new bridges and to reaffirm its outward-looking attitude. I have set out Scotland's vision and offer today and I commend Arctic Connections to everyone present. Please consider it Scotland's invitation card to our Arctic neighbours. We stand ready to work with you all and we hope that many of you will respond. Thank you very much. Thank you.